Oh, bother. <laughs>
hoping to not get left behind in the glory. Riders at the double. Of course, House Cornelia will not do them the discourtesy of leaving them out, especially at the risk of their own troops. Why not let the House Julia take the brunt of the damage? And I think that's what you're going to see here today. I will kill any man who shows fear or mercy. And you just got to love the look of the Auxilia with their turncoat red on. It's just... <laughs> times have I told you? Use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. Can't deny that. Now let's go check out our uh, Italian troops. They are all certainly ready for war. Now let's go check out our enemies. So today, let's ask this question which faction is your most aesthetically pleasing in total war rome i guess it doesn't have to be total war rome but let's go between rome and attila i mean it's hard to deny the romans just they they look just amazing but modded up i can never deny the uh, well, I guess it doesn't have to be modded, but I can never deny the glory of the Corinthian style helmed uh, classical Greek army from Wrath of Sparta. Those are always going to be my favorite, even if Wrath of Sparta was not my favorite campaign by a long shot. Also, I do hope that everyone watching had a chance to talk out or to uh, check out my first Let's Talk on Sieges. We are going to be having quite a few of those, so make sure to stay tuned for that. The uh, topics that I talked about in that one ring especially true in Total War Rome 2, um, especially the fallback point. Like, what is the point of having a city center? knowing that this is the end this is the end of your nation and you would rather risk running away than fight for what's left of your of your kingdom i can't imagine that of course that's just me personally whether it's realistic or not it certainly makes for a less cinematic showing I'll, i will say that for sure But I will definitely say, if your army gets wiped out anyway, you might as well go down fighting. You're gonna you're gonna die or be put into slavery. So. And it looks like the first wave of skirmishing has begun. Oh. Not a good start for us.
Looks like it's time for the first engagement. And not to be completely left behind, we've got our barbarians charging forward on this side as well. That is the real disadvantage of being on horseback in this game. If you get stuck in an engagement with uh, units that are shorter than you, you are just missile fodder. Now we got the House Julia charging on in here. Perhaps a little foolishly. It looks like our forces in the center are going to be the ones who break through first. And our barbarian cavalry have done a full flank, circling around and wiping out the enemy skirmishers. There they go now. Make charge! Probably not our best move getting trapped by some hoplites. And looks like the enemy forces are being surrounded. They're going to realize this and start to flee. So, guys, I'm going to let this battle play out. Keep zooming in and out. But I will catch you back on the campaign map.
and hardly a flawless victory, but a decisive victory nonetheless. And while it is certainly tempting to subjugate them, I don't believe that that is the best course of action, as the uh, Julia probably would not take too well to that. So, we're going to occupy. Your next command. And the Ardehi have been destroyed. Apollonia is in Roman hands, as it should have been for quite a while. Now, let's take a look at the overall map. Oh, not the diplomacy map. The overall map. There we go. And once again, it belongs to House Cornelia. We'll see if that changes hands at any point. But I, uh, I somehow doubt it will anytime soon. And while I'm sure that they are fuming at that, they do not have the power to do anything about it. So... Commander. Let's move you down just Forgive a little me, bit. But I cannot. Can I put you out to march sea this turn? Feet. I sure can. Then march some more. The waves still beckon. All right. So the third auxilia is going to be heading west to assist with the fighting over in Sicily. And we have another front to worry about up in Jessica. It does look like things are starting to get better there. That's good. Let's try to keep things in perspective right there. What do you wish of me? And let's start spying on some Greeks. On the road again. I want to see what kind of odds we're up against. There is a full army in Larissa, but none in Athens. Swift and, silent and what are the Spartans up to? Two full armies. That, well, no, an army and a half. I'm sure they will not be very easy to overcome, especially if they all ally with each other. Let's check it out. Yeah, Athens and Sparta very much love Macedon. And that only makes sense. And I doubt that they'll be very friendly with us. Let me just double check that real quick. Oh, they, they don't hate us. This could end up working out. We'll see. Fleet reporting. We're definitely going to give him warrior trait after that showing. That's your command. And your role was much more of the strategist. Let's give you logistics. Well, no. Let's give you administration. There we go. Hopefully nobody else needs an upgrade this turn and we can we actually end a turn battle. peacefully. I am a favorite son of Mark. There is much merit in a treaty between us. They want a non-aggression so pact. They don't want a non-aggression pact. Changes every every other turn at least. Um, no. For having the audacity to ask us for even a we token. We will walk the warrior's road together then. At its end stands your funeral pyre. I will bring the torch. Ooh. Coming straight for Delminium Singduin. Singadun, excuse me. And a child has died. Naeus Curious Trianus. Strong name. Unfortunately, uh, not strong enough. 
and we have a slave revolt imminent in Illyria. Things are getting crazy here. Now let's take a look at Marcus. I believe he is our lost son here. We'll give him a little bit of power. You might be joining an army here shortly. Now something that I wish was a... Um, was a thing in this game is more of the... Uh, how do I say this? more of a military climb kind of like well the way the armies are split in total war three kingdoms where you have multiple leaders in an army and before you say well that's stupid i don't even want to have to have one general just to lead my armies around why should i have three i think it would signify very well a um the roman climb up the ranks and then there should be positions in the military where you're over multiple armies. Just my opinion, but there it is. Ready for orders. Now, the second auxilia is going to have to race up to Delminium. I don't know if we're going to be able to we make it to be able to assist them at all. Doesn't look like we will. Commander. We could force march, but that might put us in a bit of a precarious situation, especially if we're exhausted. I don't care how tired you are. But I do think it's better than losing the city. We Perhaps it's enough back. to push them off. Not entirely sure. I am going to get rid of these Celtic skirmishers. I think the forces in Sejeska are enough. And unfortunately, the third is going to have to move Returning back. To shore. This is also going to put a uh, pause on our Syracusian expansion. The first Ready legion orders. is going to have to start marching north. We have a new war to worry about with the uh, Iraviski. Yeah. Excuse me. Advance. And I hate force marching everyone around, but it is something we're going to have to do. And the third legion really needs to uh, get some more troops. I didn't realize that we were ignoring them so much. Ready for battle, Commander. All right, having two full armies, even in force march stance, should be enough to dissuade the uh, Sordiski, but we will see. Let's go ahead and end this turn. And of course, there's something that I didn't do. Ready for orders. I can't imagine how anybody got a promotion. Oh, the veteran. Okay, fair enough. And I wasn't expecting the Balkans to be such a hotbed of conflict, but it certainly is. And speaking of, they are going to try to take advantage of our lesser forces because I got rid of those uh, mercenaries. So let's see how this goes. These rebels are insolent, impudent beasts. Their backs deserve to be bent beneath the lash of their presumptions. How dare they raise a hand against the appointed order of the world? Well, we are their scourge. Hey! 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 Ooh. Perhaps he'll uh, eventually go out and hunt these rebels. They have been a persistent thorn in our sides ever since the seizing of Sejestica. So something that we've got to keep in mind. 
Now, looking at our enemy forces, it does appear that they are splitting up this time. In fact, their leader is coming up the middle instead of coming around. Whether that's going to be a good thing or bad thing for them is yet to be seen, but I believe that if uh, we were able to hold with our tiny garrison, we will be able to hold with the might of four extra regiments of Hastati. Out of all of the uh, forces of Suggestica, the Rurari have had it the worst. On the front line, ready to get butchered every single time. But somebody's got to do it. And these spearmen are hardly the problem. It's these oaths sworn that are going to do some damage. Although there is no fear of us actually losing on this front. We've got the Stadii coming around the side. They're going to uh, do some good work hitting the flank of this general unit, the Oathsworn. Here they come around the corner. And it looks like the Rurari were defeated, but we were able to hold them with the Principes. All we've got to do is get the kill in with the Hastadii, although that is easier said than done. Well, not for those guys. And it does look like it could go either way right here.
man, this is still a tough battle over here. It does appear that they are starting to break apart, though. And there they go to break the skirmishers. These guys have been doing us a lot of damage today. It does appear to be over without ever needing the secondary flank. So I'm going to let these guys run out of the city, but next I will uh, see you back on the campaign map. It calls it a close victory. I'm going to call that pretty heroic. I mean, just alone, our general got 463 kills, which is pretty amazing. And of course, we're going to take those people into uh, slavery. And it looks like the uh, forces at Epidamos are going to also be feeling the wrath. I don't know if we're gonna win this battle, but it is one that is gonna have to wait until next episode, which I assure you will be sooner than the gap between these last two. So, until then, to all my friends, wherever you are, good morning, good evening, and good night. I will see you in the next one. If you made it this far into the video, I just want to say thanks for watching, especially to those of you who have been with me since the beginning. I am still having a blast and very much enjoying the formation of this community with all of you. If you have any suggestions for videos you would like to see, please let me know because I want to make even better content as we continue down this journey together. As always, if you enjoy what I'm doing here and want to support me, then you know what to do. Comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.